Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Cap Capstan. I'm the general counsel for Quantum Companies and Beltway Plaza. I've been with Beltway Plaza for 32 years. To my right here is Alex Vajegas. He's with Rogers Consulting. You can see the lower right hand corner. They are the land planners and engineers. Alex is a principal in the firm. He's been active in this regard with respect to Beltway Plaza for at least three years now, right? Yes, sir. So I thought I'd make some preliminary remarks just for a minute or two. So you've been invited, pursuant to this invitation, to learn about the detailed site plan phase one for the Beltway Plaza redevelopment project. So I have to assure you, this has been designed not only by Rogers, but by a competent team of landscape architects, of financial uh, planners and consultants, land use attorneys, civil engineers, architects, so I didn't mention that before. We also have an experienced, well-financed joint venture partner in Dolbin Atatco. They've already proven themselves in Greenbelt and elsewhere, in Greenbelt by building the Verde Apartments in Greenbelt Station South. So this is gonna be a multi-year, multi-phased project, might extend to as many as 12 or 15 years. Um, we're gonna permit the merchants and restaurants not only to survive here as they have been, but to thrive in the future. This detailed site plan includes apartments, a hotel, and a 27,000 square foot recreation hall, which will be donated to the community. Mm. The community at large, not only the people that are resident on the property. So far, this team has been literally working day and night from the original vision conceptual site plan, the preliminary plan of subdivision, and this first detailed site plan. We've listened very hard. We've incorporated the very great suggestions we've had from the community, from your advisory planning board, from your parks and Rec recreation advisory board, from Green Aces, from uh, the Greenbelt uh, planning and community development staff, from the uh, Greenbelt Count Mayor and Council, and from the Bourbon Heights Mayor and Council, and from the ULI, the Urban Land Institute. I'm pleased to state unequivocally that we have earned the respect and support of the community of large in planning this comprehensive and complex project. It's taken us three years to get to this point, and some details are still evolving. Our program here tonight is a simple one. If you have not yet signed in, there's a sign-in sheet in the ante room there, please do so. Your feedback is very important to us. So you may do so in a number of different ways. You may put feedback on the sign-in sheet. You may take one of the question cards that we, that we put on the table outside and, and posture a question or a comment there. Or you can send me an email. My email address is indicated uh, at the bottom of the invitation and on the handout. So, um, that's how you'll make your questions known to us on the card provided, please do so. We're gonna field the written questions of general interest as time would permit here. So as a native Spanish speaker, I think I've got that right, Alex. Yes, Alex is gonna make himself available after the formal presentation to dialogue with anyone uh, for whom Spanish is their uh, primary language to achieve uh, maximum understanding. Further questions, again, and any comments can be uh, directed to me at the email address. Uh, we have a memorandum of support. It's also on the table in the ante room. If you feel inclined to do so, we would be happy to have you sign that kind of a petition, if you will, a memorandum of support. And Alex uh, indicated earlier that there will be a, uh, a website where at uh, this, this PowerPoint presentation will be made available. Alex, I think it's up to you now. Good talk, Kyle. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. As Cap mentioned, my name is Alex Villegas. I'm a principal with Rogers Consulting. And today, in the next 20, 30 minutes, I'd like to spend some time and give you an overview of the Fairway Plaza redevelopment. It's the transformation into a great lifestyle center. Uh, the story started to get written when the dot-com and the Amazons of the world started to impact the retail industry. This was even prior to COVID. And of course, the last 16 or Carolinos 
how many months it's been. So what a quantum and the ownership of the Bellwick Plaza Mall started to do since 2018-19 was to start thinking uh, how do we evolve into the future, how we help transform the existing shopping center, which is a great asset, not just for the community, the retail, but uh, for the entire Prince George's County and the city of Greenville. Uh, in the next few slides, and uh, what I like to do, if everybody knows me, I like to go through a presentation and then have a dialogue. Cap say we're here to answer any questions, but more important, we want to hear your comments, your feedback. Yes, I've been working, I have the pleasure to be working in, in the city of Greenville for 15 plus years. I was one of the engineers planned at the uh, Greenville station and, and since then multiple other projects, but nevertheless, like, live and be here all the time, that's who you are and your interest into these projects is extremely important for us. And as Cap said, we've been trying to get input for everybody how to make this even a better project. I'm going to give you a quick overview and I'm going to show you a short video that was used in the, in the previous approval to give you context of the entire property and how it gets redeveloped. Uh, a little bit of a timeline. Uh, for these type projects, we have to go through a three-step entitlement process. The first one of them was the conceptual site plan. That got reviewed and approved by the City of Greenville Council and the Prince George's County Planning Board and affirmed by the Prince George's County District Council in 2019. The next step was the preliminary plan of subdivision. And right now, we are kind of in one of the last stages for the first phase, and it's the detailed site plan. A uh, tentative schedule, as you will see here, for a couple more hearings and meetings with the city council, and ultimate to the Prince George's County Planning Board. Uh, as we are showing this to others besides this room, I'd like to highlight kind of where we're located, Capital Bellway 95, Greenbelt Road, existing Bellway Plaza <coughs> shopping mall, very close to the Greenbelt Metro Station. Um, great property, three major anchors, Target, giant grocery store, and right here next to us, the AMC movie theater. Um, as I mentioned, the first set of drawings for the entitlement was the conceptual site plan, which we received approval in 2019. What the conceptual site plan did was, as established by the Greenville sector plan, was to start thinking how we redevelop the shopping mall into multiple phases. This is a very large property, almost a million square feet of existing retail, and how do we move it forward to transform it into something else? So this conceptual site plan approves multiple phases, and today I'm gonna to give you most of the information about the phase one and the detailed site plan. The next slide you'll see is the approval of the print plan of the subdivision for the ultimate transformation of the shopping center. Today, and the purpose of the detailed site plan, the one that is coming to planning board in September, is for the phase one, which is kind of the existing uh, parking lot in the back of the mall. Right now, where most people learn how to drive and other things, but really fairly not utilized so much nowadays. I'm going to jump quickly. Uh, this is an animation that is going to show you the entire transformation of the shopping center, I would say maybe 10, 15, 20 years. It's really hard to predict when you're looking at a project this magnitude with so many existing leases, tenants, structures. Uh, and as this is about three to four minutes and I'm gonna kind of narrate some of the important things. Uh, clearly the uh, metro station located somewhere in here we're going to start looking at the back of the mall where the surface parking lot exists. Uh, our friends and neighbors of Franklin Park, existing a community right behind us or north of us. And the first phase of the detailed site plan, which is mostly what you're going to hear today, is the existing parking lot. How do we take that existing parking lot and transform it into something that is going to include some residential units? And these residential units is not only to help with the current demographics of Prince George's County, the city of Greenville, the need for housing, but also how to reinforce the fact that people can live and work 
and shop kind of in the same neighborhood. Right now, uh, at least me and other people from my company will be working from home and being able to achieve many things. And I think that's going to be one of the insertion points when we look at back 100 years ago and what happened. Like, this will be one of those. It's really going to change the way we do things we live. But nevertheless, it's the need for this open space where people can recreate, where people can actually live, work, and shop in the same neighborhood. This will be existing back of the mall as we come back, and this is very important. Right now, when you're driving behind the mall, there's no connection into sharing. You're kind of isolated. Uh, there's actually a great difference. The parking lot sits here, we sit there. We need to connect. We need to be able to connect into a community. And one great asset is the MC and very few people. I, I know how to get in and park in the back to try to get, but you don't see a lot of people coming through the movie theaters. Many of the, the shopping centers where you go, that's where people come in and you see the food, the grocery, everything. But in here it's separate. We want to create an opportunity where there is a plaza. People will congregate. The existing parking garage, and Cap have said me, it doesn't look good. It doesn't <laughs> matter how we slice it. It was built, it was functional, but it's not a nice looking structure. This DSP is actually going to replace this parking garage with something new, something that is current. And you, I think I'm gonna take this. I, you're gonna you're gonna like what I'm going to suggest when we get there. So this is mostly the phase one. But what happened after we go to phase one, I think you need to see the rest of this video to give you a context for those that are not that familiar, where we want to do ultimate with the shopping center, is to start transforming the existing enclosed mall into a lifestyle center. We want to open the space. We don't want to have an enclosed structure where people just come in, but let's make it open where we have recreation, we have outdoor restaurants, people can see. One of the biggest challenges that is extremely unique on this shopping center is how do you go into a grocery store? You have to literally push your car into a shopping mall to then go into a grocery store. That's something that we need to make it more feasible, put the parking right there so people, if you're gonna go to a, to a grocery store, park across the grocery store, get inside the grocery store versus going into the shopping center first. Some of these we wanna have uh, an opportunity to create a lifestyle center where kids recreate. There are plenty of examples. If you think National Harbor, if you think downtown Silver Spring, if you think downtown Bethesda, uh, I'm just naming a few to give. One of the closest ones is Riverdale Park. They did a really nice job that is close by uh, for Riverdale Park, so that's where the new Whole Foods is. I, I see some people ask, like, you take Route 1, College Park, go south, there's a new Whole Foods. And they did a really nice, uh, really nice job. Yeah. University Park. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how you would know it. University, <laughs> University Park. Oh yeah. That's so, how so you would probably recognize it. Yeah. Oh. Um, that, we've been to Riverdale Park a bunch of times. Do you like it? So yeah. is that a concept where you have that opportunity that the grocery store is there, but the retail, the restaurants, you can interact, the kids are playing, you're not really building a tot lot or, or the swing for the kids, but it's a structure and they can use the splash park and everything else. I'm going to... Uh, hold questions. I'm going to hold questions, but uh, we want to make this interactive. One thing that is core, we have a property, 64 acres, and for the most, it's paved. Whatever you look is concrete, asphalt, and very few trees. Even though the quantum companies was pioneer and they tried to work with the University of Maryland to create a store water management and bioretention in the back, for the most, the entire property was developed prior to the store water management regulation. What we like to include in here is an opportunity to create more open space, more green space, create street sections that actually have street trees, planting, landscape, that is really going to enhance and help us. I, I, I think I heard somebody talking about global warming and other things that are really happening in the world. If we keep uh, the property as it is, no trees, no shades, no landscape, no soil water management, it's gonna make it very challenging. So this was big picture overall. We can draw to act in a little bit, but I'm gonna keep going into the details I plan per se, that as I mentioned, it is the back of the mall, existing parking lot. 
This is a color render representing the back of the mold and the details I plan. As you go, it's only existing surface parking lot. Now we're gonna have a network of streets connecting back to Priestwood Drive, uh, having a master plan trail that will take us from Greenbelt Road 193 back to Priestwood Drive. You see a lot of people uh, dropping out the kids in here. They try to go walk back to the school, things like that. So this detailed site plan is for 750 residential units, one hotel, and as Cap mentioned, I'm gonna give you more detail, a recreational center. This is something that at the time of Prenplan of Subdivision, with the input of the City of Greenville Council, PRAP, everybody else, we found the need that Greenville West doesn't really have a large indoor recreational facility. So that was a profit that we did. It's so about 27,000. You're going to see some details about it. I want to show you kind of a couple of renders pictures of what it's going to look like if you were to be standing on Priestwood right now, Franklin Park. To delete and re record your method. If you were to be standing right now in Franklin Park trying to look at the AMC in the back of the mall, this is what you're going to start to see. We're going to create a plaza. AMC is this shaded building in here. So kind of if you're standing here and starting to look back, this is what we want you to experience the moment you leave these doors. I'm going to kind of briefly show you some of the architectural elements. There has been a lot of input from the advisory planning board, the city council, the park and planning staff, See some of the people that have been given us input here and there and everywhere, and trying to uh, kind of use the resemblance of Greenville, the Art Deco kind of things that we have, and incorporate it into our current structure that makes sense. This would be a view from Bristol Drive next to the school. The school would be kind of right here. This is to give you an idea how the architecture is going to incorporate with the surrounding neighborhoods. This is the corner where we have the proposed hotel. We have not selected a flag per se, but this will give you kind of a sense of what the hotel is gonna look like. Um, I was talking about this existing parking garage next to us, and that's something that with this DSP, we will be replacing. This right now is a two-story deck that How really- many is that? How, how many stories is the parking garage? This one would be four stories, and right here... This looks like six, I'm sorry. No, this is one, two, three, four stories. And um, what you have here, this is the existing kind of the laugh out loud building, if you were to the see it. Former, the sports authority building. The, the former building sports authority. Was finished in 1989, originally. And, and what's important about that piece of information is that's something that is going to be dedicated to the city of Greenville as an indoor recreational center. 24-7, 365. Oh, really? Not dependent on the weather. Mm -hmm. Is the church still up there? Right now the church is there. Yeah, the, the and Laugh Out Loud is there. And Laugh Out Loud, yes. It's sure. right. sharing the space now. So during the prep of subdivision state, which was uh, 20... 2020, 2019, I'm now losing 2020. 2020. We work it out that we're going to work with them to find a place within the existing shopping center. But this was the ideal location for the rec center. Uh, we met with PAP, they based on the ceiling height, the location, close to Franklin Park, close to the access, close to AMC, kind of get that synergy together. So, build a new plaza across the AMC movie theater, replace the existing parking garage and a donation of 27,000 square feet community center. What do you do inside the community center? Besides being 24 seven, uh, which is important, not everybody can just recreate in the soccer field only three months a year. So we're gonna create, uh, working with the Pratt, uh, looking at two main fields, plus the office, the stores, the lockers, everything around it. And this can be reconfigured for multiple uses, whether it's volleyball, basketball, indoor soccer, things like that. Very important for us as a company, as the owner, is store water management, where it's going, environmental site design, really try to improve into existing conditions as this goes right across the street to a heavily wooded, protected, 100-year floodplain. Make sure water is treated before it gets there increase the green space, 
Uh, we're gonna use microbioretention. We're gonna use uh, some plantes, silva cells. Uh, the silva cells, for that might be a less common term, is uh, kind of like, you can use them as you're closer to the sidewalks and help the trees really uh, have the knob water. Sometimes when you're doing landscaping, you have, you're competing for the street trees, the sidewalk, the, the road. These trees might not have enough room, enough water. This will help with both. But the connectivity of pedestrian, uh, as I said, we have a master plan trail, which we're gonna be implemented, so you'll be able to connect to Frisco Drive, back into 193, to really have that pedestrian experience. Right now, uh, if you're a biker or walking, you really have to walk around the entire mall to go from one point to another. We wanna change that. Uh, some of the stuff that we're gonna propose that are not just for the initial phase, but really for everybody, we're thinking of amphitheater in this location closer to the school. It's been a discussion, a lot of discussion, what should go here? So we figure the mall currently has a lot of events that are happening here, from the stuff that happened during the holidays, from music, from name and Halloween, trick or treat. So what if in, co heritage month events. in coordination with month. that, we can start doing some indoor, but there will be an opportunity for some outdoor stuff at the amphitheater location. Uh, this is a view of the open space. A lot of thinking has been uh, placed into where and how create the open space for the project. Most projects will come and try to do open space for the residents, for the multifamily. In this case, the goal was to create something that it was for the overall community, for Brisbane Drive, create very large open space that can be used not only by the residents of the, of the proposed multifamily development, but for the city residents. Uh, when we were thinking about the trail connection, and we were giving some examples regarding Silver Spring, University Plaza, will be, as we connect the master plan trail, let's find a way to put a spray ground, some seating area, so it might be a place that yes, you come in and going, but also a place where you can just sit and recreate, and bring the kids play around. This one is the one I promised you. What are we gonna do with the parking garage that right now is probably not the best looking garage? Well, we're thinking of creating an art walk. So let's use when we rebuild the garage and find a way that this area could include some of the art, either local or permanent or transition uh, for people to actually enjoy as you're walking from the community center to the parking garage to the AMC theater, but also really improving the way it looks like. Many of these art installations, they can be that is a uh, context that it could be temporary, that it could change every year. There's a lot of art, sculpture, painting that is happening. Uh, a little bit about the sinus and circulation and making sure people understand where we're going as we have master plan trails, bike lanes. There's gonna be a lot of uh, maps to help people orient where they're going plus the sig signalization for the, for the mall. I think one of the biggest assets the city has in Prince George's is the trail network. And what we're trying to do right now, the trail network gets a big hole in the ground. It's right. Well, let's connect it, and when we redevelop the mall, we're gonna be able to have high care, bike care, trail, all connect and take use of the, of the map. We're working with the city to be able to update the current map to incorporate going through the Bellwood Plaza. Uh, these are some examples of how each of the multifamily buildings will have their own private rec facilities. We felt important from the developer uh, that each of these buildings will have you know, recreational facilities from swimming pools, seating areas, the um, uh, fire pits for the residents of the multifamily buildings, besides what they would expect from the rec center that is open really for everybody within the city. This is the second building. We labeled 1A, 1B, 1C, and the hotel. That's how we nomenclate the entire phase one. Uh, they, they all have uh, kind of the swimming pool and the kind of current 
and most recent stuff that the multifamily apartments are looking for uh, nowadays. This one is 1C with a lot of sculpture, natural. Some of these would be, the one in 1B would be exposed from British Food Drive. Uh, I mentioned before kind of the creation of streets that actually includes the hiker, biker experience. This is the entire circulation map right now. I don't know if you're brave enough to walk through here, and I don't. It's just like when you're in the front parking garage, that's probably much where you want to go and try to go quick inside the mall, because circulation is tough. And when you kind of the Wendy's area is even worse, but how in that area where people can safely uh, walk from one area to the back to the bridge? So that's the new phase one? So, very, very important question. And uh, even though our phase one is in the back, that something is going to get done with these details I kind of blew away. Complete the pedestrian circulation in the front 193. That's a safety issue. We want to fix that. And we promise to do it early on. Does that include the uh, bike path too? So the bike path, the challenge with the bike path, there's a lot of discussion, is Marion State Highway is the one that owns the right away from 193. What we're doing and proposing is the pedestrian cycle. So it doesn't include it's the bike path? Not yet. But what we're doing is working with Maryland State Highway to challenge and get that going as soon as possible. So this is 193 Wendy's, and it will be a creation of that TEDx and experience. Uh, all the way to, I guess this is Bank of America, if I'm not mistaken, and kind of create that whole pathway. When we do the future phases, the one thing we want to do that we feel strongly is currently, as you come in on 193, you have kind of this ramp or whatever you want to call it. People fly to try to get into the shopping center. We want to eliminate that and make this more a pedestrian safe location versus cars just flying inside the mall. That is not safe. And this is an important cross when you're thinking Berwing Heights and, and all the neighborhood. You want to have that connection without having the cars flying by. This is a graphic representation, kind of how we're going to enhance the landscaping right now. There are very few trees, if you can call them trees, maybe shrubs as they are. And there's a great difference. So we need to work with the grades. We need to work with the three-dimensional challenge, but create that person experience that is safe and alone 193. And this is kind of a cross-sectional that, that this existing pavement, you have Corban Garden, there's a lot of large utility poles that we need to deal with, but we're gonna create the side, the side, side path, sidewalk, and create a grass tree where we can plant the trees to kind of the shade, the protection, the walking experience. What's the timing, what's the sequence? We're gonna start from building 1A, 1B, 1C, and lastly a hotel, but Early on will be the rec center and the improvements to the MC Plaza, followed by the parking garage. This was my kind of quick presentation. I much rather have the input, the dialogue, the feedback, reactions uh, for those that don't feel uh, comfortable doing in this setting. Email us, sign up. Happy to receive any comments. But let's start with that. I've been following this uh, site plan. Uh, I've been in every meeting. I'm actually the vice chair of Prab, of Parks and Recreation. Um, so I've been in all these meetings, and I've actually gone through the different. We've actually, you know, definitely pushed a lot of the recreation pieces. Um, I've seen the evolution of this site plan. It's definitely come a long way from the original conceptual site. That it's about having that smart development that we should have as far as growth. Um, and I've said this before council and even full members of PRAV, uh, my thoughts, uh, because one thing that we don't want to get engulfed by, you got stuff going on Bowie, you got stuff going on College Park, around you, in 20 years, I want to see my, my green belt, our green belt continue to grow. You know, so I don't want to be that drive through city. I'd like to highlight a couple of things. Number one is the reason we're here is to let you know kind of what we're thinking, but to listen from you and uh, kind of what Rick was saying. We have been to many of these, I think 12, 
this year only with many. Uh, yeah, and with all the advisory planning boards, with PRAP, with the city council, but you are making the project better. We're not starting here by, this could be Landover Mall, we're starting here with the reality is the retail industry has changed and we're moving forward and this is something that we want all to enjoy and be proud of and everybody is helping us get a much better plan. So uh, one phrase I didn't hear is uh, uh, ongoing maintenance costs uh, and also I didn't hear uh, what the uh, uh, amount of new uh, facility use, uh, water, sewer, uh, and road maintenance will be going forward and who will pay for that? Sure. Very good question. Let me try to break it into uh, two or three questions. Water and sewer. The property during the pre -pre of subdivision was te tested for public facilities. One of the approvals is we have to do hydraulic planning analysis through WSSC. WSSC owns all the public water and sewer in Prince George's County and they have already uh, reviewed and approved the redevelopment of the shopping center to include up to 2,500 residential uh, units. And with the existing infrastructure, and there will be some improvements So two of the sanitary sewer office. And those get paid by the developer. They paid by? Developer. Forever and ever? Yes. That's me. But in perpetuity, who's going to be paying for the maintenance of all of these things? Which things? The water and sewer? Water and the sewer, the sidewalks, the uh, okay. The so green now, space. so that's the that's the second question. Now we're talking uh, how does the sidewalk, landscape, trees, uh, how it looks gets maintained. As part of the plan of subdivision approval, there is a condition that the owners will have to form. Uh, for most people that live in a, in a community, a homeowners association that is the equivalent uh, in the commercial real estate that they have to create one and that would be the entity responsible for trash, snow, landscaping, water, irrigation and that entity would be the one maintaining. Yeah, the, the financial long, long uh, term ramifications you really haven't addressed because if if you uh, really study developments like this uh, throughout the country, you realize that they hit a wall when uh, change happens and the city is left, or the residents of the city is left with bills they can't pay. One, I'll give you an example. It's called Detroit. Interestingly enough, my daughter came up with this question and she- You can ask the question. I think I'll let you ask, ask the question. Uh -huh. She goes to Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, That's she, great. Uh, with all the new residents um, and, and stuff, what would you do with like the school and stuff? Is there going to be a new school? Great question. So I'm going to give you the, the answer. Uh, like if we have the line in the tunnel, it would give you more specific, but I'll give you that. During the pre of subdivision, which was the stage where, previous to this one, the Park and Planning and Prindles County and the City of Greenville review and approve a plan to go up to 2,500 residential units. The way Prindles County uh, development works, every new development, every new building permit has to pay an impact fee to the county. That impact fee goes into building schools. If you've been following maybe more recent news, Prince George's County is first in the United States to actually start moving with a public-private partnership to start building new schools, and there are six schools that actually broke ground the last month or so. So um, even though each developer doesn't associate me with <coughs> build this school or build this one, it goes into a fund, which the county is the one that is going to find how to use it. But clearly, Springfield County, that's a top priority in the county and it's happening. Really good question. Or what? Sure. Are they set up? Very good question. Uh, right now, all 750 units are set to be multifamily rentals. What we did during the conceptual site plan, the plan plan subdivision, a lot of the input from the community was we need to have different type of housing for sale, for rent, uh, senior housing. 
Uh, what we have been challenged with is the realities of the market. Prince George's County, in general, I don't remember the last uh, condominium building beside National Harbor for sale. All the multifamily that is happening in Prince George's County is being uh, rented. And that's kind of what we're doing. What we prefer is at the 600 building terminal, and I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have to do another study. Because we want to go to the market and confirm that we can do either for sale uh, multifamily units or senior housing. And that's our commitment. So right now, they are intended to be for rent multifamily apartments, mm -hmm. but we're committed to adjust, especially building 1C, to become a for sale. One thing that exists today, I live in Greenbelt East, okay. and you know, historic Greenbelt, mm -hmm. based on 1938, everything's interconnected, you can yep. ride bikes. Um, it would be nice, you're saying that there's going to be a lot of biking, mm -hmm. which would be great. Are you going to have, um, they've just installed an old green belt rental bikes. Mm -hmm. So you can Capital rent. bike share. That's so, what's going to happen So here. we're not even going to wait for this to happen. We're currently talking to the county yeah. to try to move forward with a capital uh, bike share very right. soon. We, we think that's the way to go. Yeah, that's uh, going to be really important. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, I think having mobility, especially when you're so close to the metro and many other things, if you could just rent one of those bikes and get you where you need to go, and now we have a safe route to go through the mall to connect you there, yes. But, um, I want to be interested as things are happening, so I guess there's going to be some type of plan and a fun way to introduce what's going on with some type of activity so that you know younger people can know what's going on and spread the word and spread the interest, so it won't be just... 30 years, hey, we're here, but you're going to have incremental things to get the community involved. And to your point, I, I've been working on projects like this in Prince County for the most, mm -hmm. for 20 plus years, and until you get started and you start to see the first thing going on, few people, and to your point, right. will be paying attention or will think it's real, uh, but we're here, we've been in, I've been here in the mall, sitting in the middle of the day, trying to convey this to the people, get them excited, and I get a lot of good feedback from everybody, but we'll continue to do so. Janabe has been, uh, has created many instances and events out of her own creativity, her own intuition, uh, what she learns from some of our tenants, one of whom is uh, sitting behind us there. Um, we have events throughout the year, and they're all publicized on the website. They're put in uh, posters, like the one that was at the door when you arrived here. Uh, we have social media, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Uh, help me, uh, Janet, what else? <laughs> all of them. Yeah, all of, all yeah, of the above. All of the yeah. above, right? What we're seeing lately, and what we hope we can accomplish here in the near term, is to have a senior component to the other project. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that was something extremely successful, 80s, 90s, 2000s, having these big master plan communities just, for, but now it's just the thinking is like, why don't we have them together? They right. could be a portion of the project right. that is for senior, but doesn't have to be totally isolated right. from everybody else. There's, there's a, we can have it all in green belt, right? For everybody. Well, that's I'm that's the key. Uh, and, what, and, and if you're living, is, you don't have to sell your house, move somewhere across the country or the region right. just because there's no opportunity for you. So that's what right. we try to accomplish here. I know the suggestion had been made that the team should reach out specifically to residents of Spring Hill Lake Franklin Park Apartments since they are going to be the ones most impacted by this development in the short run but with construction and in the long run with the potential impact of uh, the, the rents here uh, potentially raising the rents there. Uh, but that aside, uh, I, I, and I'm certainly a fan of redevelopment of Beltway Plaza, I've been urging it for years. Uh, I don't think we should be persuaded just by the pretty pictures that we've seen and by the animation and the promise of uh, the change to come. There are practical questions uh, that need to be addressed. I can think of one which I'd like to ask, but before I ask it, uh, there were allusions to the change to the front of the mall, but without specifics. Uh, in future phases of redevelopment, that sidewalk is going to be put in where there is not one now. In future phases of redevelopment, the front of the mall will be addressed, but they in essentially intent, 
intend to keep the front of the mall as it is. The pad sites, which I acknowledge they profit from substantially, and they want to keep, but the pad sites themselves create a conflict with pedestrians who might be traversing from the sidewalk into the mall because there's that constant traffic. Uh, there's no, been no suggestion made as to how improved bus uh, transit is going to be provided for. Right now, I tell you, whether you're going east or west on any of the buses, metro or uh, county buses, it, uh, it takes uh, anywhere between 8 and 15 minutes to get through to the point in front of, uh, uh, underneath their parking lot, which they intend to retain in the front, to the point of uh, uh, the, the bus stop in, in front of the mall near Marshall's, near the entrance to where Three Brothers is. And that, uh, I've seen no discussion of how that's going to change. I like to do a couple of things. One is the one observation you made. We made a very clear commitment that is happening in phase one, that is the pedestrian improvement from 193. So I want to clarify that. That's something we're doing with the initial phase, even though phase one does not include anything along 193. These apartments, I assume there'll be efficiencies, one bedroom, two bedroom, or is it going up to three bedrooms? Or? Sure, so the majority would be one and two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. That's the target, and it's kind of very similar to Verde at Greenville Station okay. is kind of doing. It's from the demographic, is that young professional. Um, I think for the whole 302 apartments on, on Verde, I think there are 15 or 16 school-aged kids living there. So it's mostly a young professional, not family, not yeah, large family, family which in context is kind of, kind of maybe one of the observations different to what Franklin Park has to offer. So it's not to compete or to do the okay. same. And do we feel that the rent being charged would be comparable to? Uh, not to Franklin, but Verde. Verde. It would right. be like that, oh. correct. And they're published online, so that, that's what they're talking. What's the name of the landscape architect uh, firm that worked on this? Sure, so my firm, Rogers Consulting, oh, we oh, have actually. been also the landscape architectural, and we have pro done projects in the region, uh, I don't know, for the last 65 years, and that's one of our specialties. Okay. And we've had actual two specialists from Rogers working on this project for uh, the last three years. Mm -hmm. All the multifamily apartments will have EV chargers, but also the parking garage that is going to be redone, we will have the EV chargers there. That's kind of the way of the future. And right now, our development partner, uh, they're going to start, I believe the number is five on each one, but they're going to have the infrastructure to double as demand increases, so for sure. Smaller. So solar has been a lot of discussion. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, our partners, uh, Tapco and Dolben, they have done multiple of these and they have tried the solar in the parking garage, in the multifamily, but they have some challenge as the technology is still with maintenance and everything. We, Quantum, we're trying to look at it from the existing shopping mall and how we can incorporate some of these sustainable energy into existing mode, even put the redevelopment aside. What can we do now? So we're thinking about it. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to send a copy of the presentation and the video uh, to the people that provided the email address. We're going to send it to you and feel free to reply with more questions, more thoughts, and more important, any, so any ideas, solutions, what else should we be missing? The community is the one that's going to make this project even much better. While we're talking about parking, one of the things I love about Beltway Plaza is pretty much, except for like Christmas time, any other time I just come in and boom, there's a parking space there. I go right into the mall and get what I need, and I'm gone. Uh, you're going you're gonna to have all this residential coming in, so you're going to have the residential and the retail. And how much new parking are you going to have beyond what's here now, and how much are you going to take away? So when we were talking about it, uh, we are sitting somewhere right here. This, this outline is the AMC movie theaters. 
and right now, existingly, there is only a two-story parking deck. The goal in here, and with these details I've done, we're going to be replacing that parking deck with a five-story parking garage that is going to account for public parking. This is not nothing for private. This is not for the residents. This is to really enhance the amount of parking to provide parking for the rec center and to make it easier to park and access AMC and the rest of the mall. As we are now building this street that connects you back to Priestwood, to Franklin Park, we feel strongly, to kind of answer your question, to have enough and new parking. This parking deck will also have electric uh, charging stations for vehicles uh, available to them. That's something that the community has been asking for. And then on top of that, each of the multifamily apartment buildings plus the hotel they're going to have their dedicated parking garages. Is that going to be this, the same size on the ground as the current one? It is slightly different <coughs> because what we <coughs> wanted to do was to shape uh, and make it align with the rec center. Right. It's going to have more spaces. The, the, it's going to pull a little bit from uh, north to south, really to make it align and for the aesthetics of uh, to look like this. Okay. Otherwise, you kind of have an offset kind of situation that doesn't really make sense. So we wanted to make sure aesthetics, the pedestrian experience, the eyes on the street are happy. Um, I'm Little Dan and I live in the center city. Um, because I'm new to understanding all this, if you could please tell me who is paying for this project. Sure. So right now, Cub, do you want to answer that one? Well, um, we have a joint venture. Um, well. The first screen showed our primary joint venture partner, it was Dolbin. Dolbin built Verde, as I mentioned in my earlier presentation. And their, their financial partner is a TAPCO, and they've done projects all over Prince George's and up and down the East Coast. So uh, it's shared expense, basically. We're going to cover the mall's uh, part, and they're going to cover uh, the apartments, basically. And there's, uh, you know, thousand pages of documentation. So they get paid back by rental fees, expenses from residents. That's what the they residents. do. They build yeah. apartment houses and they rent apartments. Gotcha. And that's their revenue source. Gotcha. Thank you for clarifying that. What do you think the impact will be on um, the increased population on our schools, our public works, our safety police, city okay. services? So we, uh, at some point, I've forgotten what unit, but we, uh, we committed to the city that we would look at some dedicated uh, public safety presence here at some point, you know, when the population grows. Mm -hmm. So when we went through this review and approval, both by the city and park and planning, they tested for schools. And in Prince George's County, there's a school <coughs> surcharge. There's a public safety surcharge. And all these surcharges are paid in a per unit basis. Top of my head, is 10,000 for one of them, 5,000 for the other one, and each unit contributes that. That goes into Prince County Fund, part of the public safety, a portion of that, I believe is one third. I don't see, maybe Bill might you know, one third of the public safety goes into the city of Greenville. Uh, county has uh, instituted this public-private partnership for the building of schools and the uh, uh, renovation of schools. So they just broke ground on six schools like two weeks ago. Uh, countries like Canada, for the last 20 years, they've pretty much been building all the schools, hospitals using this type program. Prince George's County would be the first jurisdiction in the United States to use a public private partnership to move forward with school construction. And six of, six of them broke ground a month ago or less, and they plan to keep moving with six more. What kind of integration is there going to be transportation-wise with Greenbelt Station um, on the Metro? One of the things that uh, we committed to do with the City of Greenbelt, the staff and the City Council and the Mayor, was to look into a shuttle and perhaps a circulator. So uh, the circulator would go all through, uh, that's Conrad Erling's kind of uh, vision, that would go all through Greenbelt. The shuttle would go to the metro. So uh, I was dispatched to uh, contact all of the stakeholders 
in Greenbelt West to see what their inclination was. Now, the problem is, if you look at Capitol Office Park through this pandemic, speaking with the management there, only eight to 10 percent of the human beings have actually shown up there over the, pair of the, the past 20 months. So they're having a little difficult time forecasting what their population is actually going to be, who would be available to take a shuttle. Um, the folks at uh, Franklin Park uh, were a little discouraging. They uh, didn't really see the need for a shuttle because they say, well, our, our residents just walk right over there. It's not that far. So they don't, I don't think they saw themselves necessarily contributing to a shuttle. There was some interest on the part of the NRP people that are building, uh, I think, 350 units uh, right there next to the courthouse. It's going up right now. Uh, there was some interest on their part. Um, obviously, there's some interest on our part. In doing research around the DMV, I found that the jurisdictions pay for these shuttles and pay for these circulators. They, uh, in Montgomery County, the uh, shuttle that goes through all around Bethesda is paid for by the county. It's the same in parts of Virginia. Um, it's quite expensive. And we're not sure whether we're going to need um, just to go to the metro, whether you need a 15-person van or whether you need a 35-person bus. That's uncertain. Obviously, the larger the vehicle, the more expensive that ride is going to be. Rest and Limousine is the contractor that's been handling the shuttle for the developer from Greenville Station South up to the metro. I contacted them. They did some studies for me. And, um, from what I gather, it's a, it costs a minimum of $75 for every operating hour to run a shuttle anywhere, minimum. And that's what has to be you know, considered. And then I, uh, I went through a number of scenarios as to, well, if we were, if it were not financed and paid for by the jurisdiction, city or county, then how would the stakeholders chip in? What would be the basis? You know, the forecast number of riders, the square foot of, of the uh, facility, whether it's commercial, whether it's residential. So that would all have to be worked out on a mutually agreeable basis if it were the stakeholders that handled the shuttle and eventually a, a circulator. I'm sorry, I, I'm going to add a couple of things. During the preliminary plan of subdivision, which was the previous stage, uh, some of the things that we did, we needed to do a bicycle pedestrian impact study. And as part of that, there are profits that happen in the different phases to help improve the bus stops, provide new bus stops. Right now, as you pointed out, like if you were to picture like the buses going through here where the front parking deck is located, we want both the, the bus, the Womara buses, and everything continues serving the community. And all the internal streets uh, one thing that we're going to be submitting, and I think that was a question from Bill also yesterday, is uh, we are designing them for enough width and turning for trucks, fire trucks, buses. So there's going to be the goal and the potential, especially when we create this road network, we want the buses to hopefully change their routes and continue going through the shopping center and not just coming in and getting out now, hopefully through the circulation and really serving the residents. Okay, you just said road network, and I can't tell from that slide because they, they uh, look more like trees. Place, you have this a one is easier, so what you see and... Um, are those roads, the red lines? Yeah, so what, what you're gonna see, these are shared use roadways, which are the uh, more purple long dash lines. Uh, then you have uh, the type of sidewalks that are going to be proposed. As I mentioned before, or Cap mentioned, if you guys give us your email address, I'm going to be sending this presentation so you can see it. But this will give you kind of the complete road network of what you're going to have versus what you currently have. So I do hope and expect that there's going to be a lot of circulation on the ring road and as well as the new access to oops, new access to the mall in here. So are you cutting a road through where the, um, 
This uh, one will be a brand new road. Right now, when you're in Bracewood Drive, there's no connection from Bracewood Drive, Franklin Park, into the mall. But this will be an opportunity for people to actually have access and then we'll build. Right now, there is sort of a road that people can do kind of east to west, and it's kind of following the trucks route, but it will be making it into more uh, an urban type roadway that has sidewalk and opportunities for the bikes. Instead of the current kind of surface parking lot with a not well-defined roadway that people kind of go around more, how an actual street with landscape, with sidewalk, with the pedestrian, and the opportunity for share uh, the street with the bikes and everything else. But does the road, will the road cut through the middle, front to back, that one line that's going from 193 so there, that so one? So this yeah. is the phase one road. What you're asking is, and that was part of my presentation before, right now, the existing grocery stores right here, yeah. and the mall you have to really go around to exactly. go from A to B. Right. We feel, and the Greenbelt sector plan back from 10 years ago identified there's a strong need to have this north to south connection. And that gets integrated as we go into phase two of the project. Yes, absolutely. Two questions. Uh, will that include the senior housing as well? And will Quantum be retaining title to the land that Dolbert is developing, the multifamily housing? Uh, it was, uh, this is a question that's come up in the past and it's never really been answered. If they're developing the apartments without retaining without obtaining title to the land, Quantum will be sharing in the rents that Dolbert will be charging uh, their residences. Hey Bill, you're making some assumptions I'm asking about, a question. The, about the terms and conditions of a thousand pages of documents of a joint venture. So um, I'm not going to get into what, how, what the split is or that sort of thing. Will Quantum be retaining title to the land? I don't think that's important. I don't see why I have to answer who's going to have title to the property. Well, maybe it's not important, but maybe to the people who are paying the rents in those apartments, they don't know who their owner is. They don't know who the I'm, ultimate... I'm sure they'll be notified as to who to pay rents to. And it also we'll influences... The title to land influences uh, the rents to be charged. So, uh, Bill, it's maybe, been said that it's going to be market rates equivalent to Verity. Uh, Bill, Bill, yes. what we said yesterday, that we anticipate that the rents to be charged in these 750 multifamily units, if they're rentals, all rentals, three buildings, would be approximately what's charged at Verdaday. We said that yesterday, we'll repeat that today. In terms of senior housing, we uh, went out to the uh, marketplace. We went to about 150 developers. I personally met with some senior housing people, and uh, we didn't get any strong nibbles in terms of doing a senior housing project right now. So we did commit to diverse housing types, including senior, including that we could find a sponsor co-op, you know, but if you, uh, this is not New York City, it'd be difficult to just, you know, open up a building and say, hey, we're gonna sell uh, stock. And if you buy stock, then you'll own stock in this cooperative. Wait, I don't own the unit? So it would be an education process. So that would, that would hurt the absorption. I'm sorry? <laughs> Not for people moving from GHI. That's exactly how they're up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, uh, you need a sponsor, basically, to have a co-op. Covered bicycle parking been considered? It's real nice to not have your bike sitting out in the rain when it's... Yeah, I there. think because we're going to have so many of these parking garages, both for the tenants as well as the one that is public, we are strongly considering that. Plus, bike share type facility that they typically sometimes can take covered areas. And then in the upper right hand corner, can you show the amphitheater? It's a tiered park. Uh, it's a tiered park basically right here, which will which could have events, could have just passive hanging out, watch the kids play on some amusements, work on your uh, devices or what have you. Uh, you know, right up in here. I think with that, I think we done uh, it. Our respect of people's time and everything. We want to thank you all for coming. For you Please make sure you signed in so we have your email address and we can send you everything that that we presented today.